Hello and welcome to another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and today we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson Number 3, Non-Proportional Linear Relationships. That is a mouthful of a lesson. But before we begin it, I'd like to remind you that you can find the worksheet that goes along with this video, along with a homework set, by clicking on the video's description or by visiting our webpage at www.emathinstruction.com. Also, don't forget about the QR codes at the top of all worksheets. Use your smartphone or your tablet to scan that code, and that'll bring you right to this video. Great. Let's begin. Now, for the last few uh, lessons, we've been looking at what are known as proportional relationships. And two variables are proportional, let's say y and x, if when we divide them, we always get the same constant. Now, when we look at a proportional relationship like this, we can always rearrange it by using a property of equality and multiply by x on both sides, telling me that y, or whichever variable that you call it, can always be found by multiplying x by some constant. <clears throat> proportional relationships, when we graph them, will always, always pass through the origin, right? And that kind of makes sense, because if I've got the equation y equals k times x, you know, when x is equal to 0, it doesn't really matter what the proportionality constant is, y will always also be 0. Thus, their graph will pass through the point 0, 0. In this particular, in this particular relationship, we can see that when x is 1, y is equal to 3, that's all you really need for a proportional relationship, right? That tells me that y will always be 3 times x. That's this guy. But what if it's not proportional? You know, what if it's a linear relationship that does not pass through the origin? That's what we're going to be dealing with today. Okay? So I'm going to clear this out. And let's move on. So here, in the first problem, we have a nice linear function. All right? Meaning that when we graph it, it ends up being the graph of a line. Very important, the graph of a line. All right, and let's, let's start by having you do letter A. This should be pretty easy. Evaluate f of negative 2 and f of 1. What two coordinate points do these function values correspond to? So pause the video right now and really quickly do this. All right, let's go through it. Remember, the negative 2 and the 1 are x-coordinates. So if I go to x equals negative 2, y is equal to negative 1. So f of negative 2 is equal to negative 1. That corresponds to the point negative 2 comma negative 1. On the other hand, if I go to x equals 1, I find that y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So f of 1 is equal to 5, 1 comma 5. Okay. Now, letter B asks us to calculate the average rate of change of f from x equals negative 2 to x equals 1. So, you know, nicely enough, over here. Right? So, remember the average rate of change. I'm going to abbreviate as a dot r dot c, kind of like arc. Right? That's going to be change in y value, f of 1 minus f of negative 2 divided by the change in the x values, 1 minus negative 2. All right, it's literally change in y divided by change in x. Well, we know that f of 1 is 5, and we know that f of negative 2 is negative 1. I just put the parentheses there because it's a double negative, and it kind of looks weird. And then we've got 1 minus negative 2. 5 minus negative 1 is positive 6, 1 minus negative 2 is positive 3, and that gives us an answer of 2. And what is that known for, or known as? That's known as the slope of the line. The slope of the line is 2, right? And you, you've seen that before in previous courses. Let me illustrate it. Let me actually erase this so it's not sitting there. And let me illustrate it in red, right? If I pick a point like this one right here, and I go to the right 1, I will go up 2. Right? Any, any point that's true. Go to the right 1, go up 2, right 1, up 2, etc. Alright? 
Now, is there a proportional relationship between y and x? How can you check? Well, you probably already know that there's not a proportional relationship because it doesn't go through the origin. And on top of that, the, uh, the actual title of the lesson is non-proportional relationships. But here's how you check. In a proportional relationship, y divided by x will be a constant. It won't change. But look what happens when we take the point negative 2, negative 1, and the point 1, comma 5. If I do y divided by x here, I'd get negative 1 divided by negative 2. And let me just simplify that a little bit. That'll be 1 half. Here, on the other hand, if I do y divided by x, I'd get 5 divided by 1, and that would just be 5. These things in a proportional relationship would be the same. So no, they're not the same. All right, they're just not the same. Now, based on our eighth grade coursework, what relationship does exist between the two variables? Write the equation and check it for points A. So from your eighth grade coursework, you worked extensively with the equations of lines, extensively. And what you should have seen was that all lines, even ones that are proportional, can be written in the form y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope of the line and b is the y-intercept. The y-intercept, sorry, that i kind of got connected to the, to the n. So we already know the slope. The slope is equal to 2. And the y-intercept, well, 1, 2, 3, is equal to 3. So this thing has the equation y equals 2x plus 3. Now I'm kind of running out of room here. So I'm going to go back and get rid of this. And watch as I check this thing. Eh, why don't we just check one of the two points? Let's check the point negative 2, negative 1. By checking it, what I mean is that when I put in an input of negative 2, right, and I'll get negative 4 plus 3, I get an output of negative 1. Yay, right? So this equation checked with that input-output pair. There's a lot of blue and a lot of lines all over the place here. All right, we are going to work extensively with equations of lines in this unit, so you'll get a lot more work on it. Still, pause the video now if you need to, copy down anything you need, and then we're moving on. All right, here we go, scrubbing. All right, so the slope-intercept form of a linear function, right? f of x equals y, f of x always equals y, and that's equal to mx plus b. Linear parameters, this is kind of a cool word, a parameter. A parameter is a constant, a constant in any model, in any model, right? See, because there's constants and there's variables x and y, they're variables. But our parameters, well, those are the slope, also known as the average rate of change, also known as the change in y over the change in x. And there's the y-intercept, right? And those are the two parameters for our linear functions. Okay, the slope being how fast y changes compared to x, and the y-intercept in my mind being where the function starts, right? The function being the y values. Okay. I'm going to clear this out, and then we're going to work more with equations of lines. Okay, let's keep working with equations of lines. Exercise number two. Given the linear function g of x equals 1 half x plus 1, do the following. A. Create a limited table of values to help graph the function. All right, let's do it. We could definitely use our graphing calculator here, because we've seen how to do that, but we're going to, we're going to do this by hand, I think. Okay, now it says a limited table of values. Okay, because we, we could go nuts here. We could, we could go all over the place. Now, how do we do this when we don't know anything else? Well, I look at my graph paper, and I notice that my graph paper starts at negative 6, and it ends at positive 6. Okay, um, might as well start at negative 6. And remember, the rule is 1 half x plus 1. 
So I'll have 1 half times negative 6 plus 1. 1 half of negative 6 is negative 3. And negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So I have the pair negative 6, negative 2. That's going to be right about here. I'm going to do letter B at the same time. I hope that's okay. Now, I could put negative 5 into my formula, but taking 1 half of an odd number is not going to be that nice. So let me skip over negative 5, go to negative 4. Right here, I'm going to get 1 half of negative 4, which is negative 2, plus 1, which is negative 1. So the point negative 4, negative 1 lies on this line. And that's going to be right here. Now many of you probably remember quick ways to graph equations of lines. That's okay. But I'm going to go through the most generic way. Create a table of values. 1 half of negative 2 is negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So negative 2 comma 0. You probably see the pattern already, right? You can probably fill the rest of it in just using pattern. When x is 0, I'll have 1 half of 0 plus 1, which is 0 plus 1, which is 1. That's going to be right here. Hopefully I'll have enough room. I seem to be getting better at drawing my straight lines if I draw them faster. 1 half of 2 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. Whoops, 2 comma 2. Doesn't quite look right, but please forgive me. 4, we'll have 1 half of 4 plus 1, 1 half of 4 is 2, plus 1 is 3. And that's right here. And then finally, 6, 1 half of 6 plus 1, 3 plus 1 is 4. All right. Oh, man. That's good. Let's go here. Let's connect it. I should really extend it a little bit farther this way. And have some arrows. Because it certainly does go forever in both directions. Now, letter C says, illustrate the slope of the function graphically. Well, as we know, right, the slope is 1 half. Actually, let me put that in red. All right. The slope's 1 half. Right? And we know that's the change in y over the change in x. So if I grab a point right here and I go this way, always let x increase, then what I see is that I go to the right 2 and I go up 1. Right? And that's how we interpret a slope of 1 half, right? We, we interpret it as right 2 and up 1. Okay, and letter D, circle the graph's y-intercept. There it is. Please note, there it is in our model, right? So everything is lining up. Okay. I'm going to clear all this out, so write down anything you need to. Make sure you've drawn those pictures on the graph. All right, here it goes. Okay. Now, exercise three says use information about slope and y-intercept to graph y equals negative three-fifths x plus four on the grid. Then we're going to do the rest of the problem. But let's start with that. I'm going to rewrite the equation down here, maybe a little bit bigger. Negative three-fifths x plus four. All right. Now notice our slope here is negative. Now we should make that negative attached to either the numerator or the denominator and I would prefer that you attach it to the numerator always. I'd like to move to the right. Since the denominator is the change in x, right? we have change in y divided by change in x, right? if we keep that denominator positive, then we'll move right 5. But this, we're going to move down 3. Right? But from where? Well, that's where the y-intercept helps. Right? Here's a nice starting value. So if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, make sure it's a y-intercept, not an x-intercept. And then I move to the right 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3. There's another point. 
Now we're talking about a line, so we really only need two points, but it doesn't hurt to then kind of go in the opposite order. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. All right, we can now of course connect these with a nice straight line. Hopefully your line is going to be better than mine. But who knows, that's actually pretty good. I like it. Get some arrows, and we have a nice line graph. Now, it says pick two points off the graph and calculate the average rate of change and verify that it's equal to the slope. Well, there's not a lot of points that we can really pick off that are nice, but these are two good ones, right? So that's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have the point negative 5, 7, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, comma 1. So the average rate of change, f of b minus f of a, divided by b minus a is still just the same as the change in y divided by the change in x. So that's going to be 1 minus 7, 1 minus 7, divided by 5 minus a negative 5. 1 minus 7 is negative 6, and 5 minus negative 5 is positive 10. Now that may not look like the correct slope, but we can always reduce it in this case, at least by dividing both numerator and denominator by two, and that will give me negative three-fifths, which is exactly the slope that I, I should have gotten. All right, average rate of change and slope are the same thing, okay? So I'm gonna clear this out, write down anything you need to, okay. Let's wrap up. So a lot of what we did today, I hope, was review. In other words, you worked extensively in both 7th grade and 8th grade Common Core math on equations of lines, graphing lines, and the slope and the y-intercept of a line. Today, we basically just reviewed that, right? y equals mx plus b, okay? Um, so let me just say for now, thank you. Thank you for a coming and watching another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and even though I seem to be garbling the ending to this video, don't forget, keep thinking, and keep solving problems.